vaccines are a really important part of how we're going to get out of this pandemic. They're a really crucial tool and should actually be available in mass quantities, um, affordable to all countries and free to the public. But what we're finding is the complete opposite. Just days ago, the World Health Organization's Secretary General said that there have been 39 million vaccination doses administered in rich countries and just 25 in the lowest income country. It's not 25 million or 25,000. It is literally just 25. And I think that really highlights the scale of the inequality that we're seeing. There's a saying that's used quite a lot, which is no one is safe until everyone is safe. When you leave the virus to continue to transmit in large parts of the world, you're giving it room and space to mutate and it could render the vaccines that we've already had potentially useless. We're in this really crazy situation where the public sector has paid for a lot of these vaccines, but now they're being privatised into the hands of private companies who are selling it to the highest bidders. Public funding has contributed 93 billion euros into COVID-19 vaccines and treatments. They have been put on the market by private companies who are essentially treating these vaccines as privately owned assets to profiteer from. And so because of that, we don't really have enough vaccines to supply to the whole world. And so we've seen countries like the UK, the US, the EU engage in a race to hoard as many vaccines as possible. The global trade rules allow companies to put 20-year patents on their products. And in that 20-year period, no other company can make or sell that treatment or that vaccine or that drug or that medicine. When you've got no competition, pharmaceutical companies essentially get to control that product. They get to control its price. They get to determine who they sell it to. They get to determine the overall quantities that they produce. Some of the companies have made pledges to price the vaccines at cost and not profit during the pandemic. The Pfizer vaccine has been priced around 20 to 30 US dollars per dose and the Moderna vaccine is around 20 dollars a dose as well. So those kind of prices don't really work for countries in the global south. This system has not been fit for purpose for decades. And we've seen that certainly at the height of the HIV AIDS crisis in the mid 1990s, new effective treatments came out to treat HIV. And that was a real breakthrough moment because up to that point, if you were diagnosed with HIV, it was essentially a death sentence. But it was put out onto the market at such a high price at 10,000 US dollars per patient per year that actually people in the global south just simply couldn't afford it. People were losing their lives in the million, especially sub-Saharan Africa, the pharmaceutical companies held out to get the highest prices and you can get them from the wealthy countries. Only around 4% of newly approved drugs each year for conditions that affect people in the global south are simply not lucrative markets enough for them to invest in. The pharmaceutical industry makes its investment decisions based not on public health needs, but based on the areas of greatest financial return. The NHS drugs bill has been increasing year on year. We are paying more and more for the medicines that we need. And in a sense, the taxpayer pays twice because actually we paid for some of that research to start with. And then we're paying again through the NHS drugs bill. These prices have become so high that actually the NHS is also increasingly having to reject or to ration effective treatment. A few years ago, NHS was rationing a treatment for hepatitis C. And it was actually a cure for hepatitis C to one in 20 patients. If you were to put that money that we spend on, for example, high drug prices into a different model that is publicly owned, we would get better value for money. The other big crisis that humanity faces is antimicrobial resistance, where humans are becoming more and more resistant to antibiotics and simple infections can lead to fatal consequences. This is an area where, again, the pharmaceutical industry hasn't invested. We are all not safe if some countries are vaccinating their people and other countries are not vaccinating. There are some proposals on the table during this pandemic to deal with some of these systemic issues. One of them is a proposal that's been put forward by the governments of South Africa and India at the World Trade Organization to suspend all the rules on patents during this pandemic. It's also had the support of about 100 countries, but it's being opposed by just a handful of wealthy countries including the UK, the US, EU, Canada. The countries that are opposed to this proposal are also the very countries that have secured vaccine supplies. Our governments need to take a stronger grip over these vaccines to ensure that they are global public goods, that they are shared, that the technology around them is shared openly with other companies to break the monopolies, to lift the patents, so that we can produce as many vaccines as possible. And if the UK were to take a strong stance on patents, then we would be able to encourage other generic manufacturers to produce the drugs that we need a lot lower prices that we're seeing from big pharmaceutical companies. This system doesn't work and actually we do need to think seriously about reforming it and putting public health, putting people, putting patients, putting access to treatments over and above profiteering.